Hello YouTube. Um, now I have to make this video shorter because I made a video already but it was too long to be able to post on YouTube. <coughs> so I'm going to try to break this up into a few different parts. But basically we're going to call this amplifier graveyard because went to my storage unit, found all the amps in there that I had that I have used and whatnot over the years. I'm going to give you my opinions on them, starting with the worst. Which is right here. This right here is a legacy. They claim it's a 800 watt amplifier. As you can see, uh, right there, 800 watts. That's probably the peak power of this, and we all know it's an American legacy. And by looking at it, it ain't no 800 watt amplifier. It ain't even close. Um, the parts in this thing are very cheap looking. It does not look like it has high quality parts at all. As you can see. But that's all I'm going to say about that one because this is not the main ones that I'm going to be looking at. Next in line. Oh shit, that's heavy. There we go. What do we have here? This is a, a KX. Tigger KX. 650.4. This is a made in China. Cheap piece of shit. Um. Anybody out there knows, or has, has watched my videos from back in the day, knows I'm a kicker fan. As far as these amps go, it's fucking garbage. This thing really, really sucked from the point I hooked it up until it fucking, you know, melted a few of the fucking MOSFETs over there. Alright, but enough about that one. Right, like I said, gotta make this video a bit shorter. Every amp after, every amp that I'm going to show you from now on, are good quality amplifiers. Starting with this. This is an old school. Um, it's upside down, but it's uh, JBL Power Series GTQ 400. It's a four channel amplifier. This amplifier, you can hook up to some coaxials, like uh, some 6x9s, 6.5s, six whatever, some components and it will make them fucking sing. They will sound extremely, extremely nice. Um, it does not work. Um, I feel I've located what possibly could be the problem, and that's this right here is pretty much not connected at all on one side. The other ones are all perfectly fine. All these other ones that you see here. I don't even know what these are, but don't hate on me, okay? But basically, like I said, this is pretty much not connected at all. I believe that if I put that and connect it, it will fix the problem. Because all it was doing is when you put power to it, it would turn on, but then it would turn off. And then it would turn on and turn off. And you could just keep doing that. So, and I really, really love this amplifier. If I get this amplifier to work, I will put that in there instead of that crossfire. Just because this is more powerful. I'm not dogging on that crossfire that I have in my car. That crossfire is a very nice amplifier. <clears throat> but this one is more powerful. So it will work better for me. That amp in its day and to this day are very, very, it's a very decent amplifier. We have here is a Memphis Power Reference Series 1000.1. Um, as you can see, it's one of the older ones. Now, I had this hooked up to two Rockford Fosgate T112s. It made the, it made those, it made those subs frickin' sing. Like, I mean, they, they sounded so good off of this. I also had, back then, a kicker 1000.1. And that kicker couldn't hold a fart to the wind compared to this amplifier. Okay, that's how good this amplifier was when I was using it. <coughs> and as you can see right there, there's some of the fried MOSFETs. They're all toasty and black in there, you can see. As well as over here. But let me, like I said... This amplifier was a very, very nice amplifier. It was very good, very well built, in my opinion. Even though I fried it, it was a very good amplifier. 
It really was. It, it took me a long time to fry. I didn't fry it overnight or anything. <coughs> it took me about a good year, year and a half to fry that thing. Okay. Um, next. Uh, here we go. I've already showed you what the 400, or the 500.4, 475.4, which is the same model, Phoenix Gold Titanium Series, look like. Now here is the amp that got me hooked on the Phoenix Gold Titanium. I still have it, and I bought this thing over 10 years ago, I believe, at a pawn shop. And I only paid like 100 bucks for it. The guy didn't know what it was as well as me. But it sat around for a while. I didn't even hook it up right away. But I had, uh, I think, that legacy. <coughs> I had that legacy hooked up before this. And let me tell you something. When you use such a piece of shit like legacy, like American legacy, and then you hook up something like this, there is no difference, or there is no comparison. Hands fucking down. And compared to the other high-end amps that I've used, this amp is just a, a phenomenal amp. I would definitely, definitely, in case any of you are wondering, I would definitely recommend this amplifier to anyone. You can hook this thing up to some fucking coaxial speakers, some uh, component speakers, either or. This thing will make them sing, it'll make them sound better than you've ever heard them. Okay, and I'm not making that up. This app is fucking phenomenal. <clears throat> now, what you may ask, well, what happened to this app? I had this app for a couple of years. I was using it. I had it hooked up to two kicker caught VRs. And anybody who knows, knows that those are 400 RMS, 800 peak each. And this thing was fucking powering them like a motherfucker. And it was clean. It was very punchy. It was very, very nice sounding. And after a while... I decided, you know, try hooking them up to some 6x9s that I had, some, you've seen in my other videos, um, I believe it was, uh, the one where I fried a, a bunch of Roadmaster shitty Walmart speakers, and that Pioneer, that Pioneer I had back when I had this amplifier, I had the pair of those in the back of my car, and this amplifier made those things sound better than any amplifier I'd ever hooked up before, I mean, it just everything was in detail, it was all smooth, it was all beautiful. Um, what happened to this? I don't even know. But, basically as you can see right here, it's, it's burnt and whatnot. This camera sucks, I am so sorry, but it's all burnt and everything right here. You flip it over here, and I don't know if you can see it in there. Right in between all that. There you go. Right here. These right here basically were um, where they were attached to the board basically melted off of the board. So that's what the problem with this is. <coughs> but enough about that. I gotta get through some uh, other ones here. <coughs> There's last two um, amps. Any um, person who Knows Ruck for Fosgate from back in the day, we'll recognize him. We got this one right here first. Okay. This is the, the Punch 40 X2. Alright, and it's a 20 watts times 2 into 4 ohms, which means if you wire it to 2 ohms, it should do 40. I could tell you from using this, I had this amp I bought off of a guy back when I worked back home a long time ago. Um, I had this hooked up to some old school Rockford Fosgate punch subs, 12s, and holy fuck, all I can say is if this was only 20 watts, like they say, and 40 watts, those subs would not have sounded half as good, because it fucking pushed those fuckers to the, to the limits, I mean, it was phenomenal, great amp, I have no idea what's wrong with it, but all I saw was, so it looks like it's a little bit brown right there, and then this right here. That's the only things I could find. Now the last amplifier. <clears throat> probably the greatest amplifier of all. I never got to use this amplifier. I'll explain to you in a minute. This is also an old school Rockford Fosgate. But this is the 500.1 power series. Alright. I don't even see these fuckers online. Okay. 
And the reason I've never gotten to use this amp is it was fried when I got it. And you're probably saying, well, why the hell would you get a fried amp? <coughs> well, back in the day, I had a Rockford Fosgate, which is about eight years newer, six years newer, something like that, than this one. It was called the 500.1 BD. It was a gray amplifier. That amplifier was fucking killer as well, but I had taken it to the shop to get it fixed because I had fried it. Because, like I said, back in the day, I didn't know what I was doing. That's why I make these videos, to try to help you all out. But, <clears throat> this amplifier, he, he couldn't find my 501 BD because he was waiting on parts from Rockford, supposedly, for over a couple of years. So when I went in there and I finally said, well, you know, enough's enough, <coughs> i just give you my amp back. <coughs> he couldn't find it. So he pretty much said I could look around in his shop and see if I find something else that I want and I could just take it. Knowing Rockford and knowing how these old school amplifiers are, this is the one that I picked out. And I haven't even hooked it up, so it might just work, I just don't know it. I'm going to hook it up here eventually. Alright. But yeah, this claims only 500 RMS at 2 ohms, which anybody who's used these amps knows it's more probably than double that. These amps are very potent. They were referred to as cheater amps. And they get the job done. And then some. But I have to cut this video short. I apologize. Because of how YouTube only lets you upload so much. But please comment on these videos. Um, I will probably make some more videos on each of these amps. And putting in more into detail what I feel about these amplifiers and everything. Also coming up, stay tuned for this. You see that? That's a kicker. Hell 7 right there. We're going to tear that fucker apart. As well as over in the corner there, there's a Wolfenhog 12. That's a piece of shit, but we're going to tear that apart. And there's an Eclipse as well that we're going to tear apart. <clears throat> Coming up in some videos here. So please comment. And please subscribe. Thank you for watching. And we'll be back soon. Later.